Hey folks, today we're going to talk about consumer and producer surplus. It's chapter 4 of your textbook, Consumer and Pro Producer Surplus, pages 94 to 113. First concept we're going to talk about is this idea of consumer surplus. So by the end of this, you should be able to understand what consumer surplus is and how to measure it and um, be able to identify when it is maximized. And that would be the same thing for producer surplus. Consumer uh, surplus looks at the additional benefit that you were willing to pay that you didn't have to pay for a product. So your willingness to pay for a good is the maximum price you're willing to go in order to get something. In this case of demand for used textbooks, Alicia is willing to pay as much as $59 for her textbook. Brad will be willing to pay as much as 45 and so on. The consumer surplus is identified by how much they were willing to pay but didn't have to pay. So if the price is $30 for this textbook market, then Alicia was willing to pay $59 but only had to pay $30. So for her, she's got $29 uh, dollars in what we call consumer surplus. She would have paid another 29 to get the book but didn't have to. Brad uh, was willing to pay 45 but only had to pay 30 so he has $15 in consumer surplus where Claudia was willing to pay 35 and only had to pay 30 so she has a $5 consumer surplus. We see that Darren didn't buy the book because he was only willing to pay 25 so Darren's priced out of the market. If we want to look at it a little differently, we could put it in a table where there's each consumer's willingness to pay, and we could look at the price, and the differential is our uh, consumer surplus. So for Alicia, she has $20, $9 in consumer surplus because we take her willingness to pay, the maximum price she would pay, and subtract the price she actually had to pay, and we see what is left. So when we look at that, we see that anytime there's a positive number, those people are in the market, have purchased the product. Anyone with a negative number is not going to buy. And re realistically, if we had a market with thousands or millions of students all trying to buy uh, used textbooks, then we would have consumers purchasing textbooks all the way until the point at which their willingness to pay is equal to the price. When your consumer surplus is zero, that's the last person who will buy. And if we were to pretend for a minute that the price dropped from $30 to 20 then we could say that Darren would then enter into the market and that he would have an additional consumer surplus of $5. And we could see that Claudia's um, original consumer surplus of 5 has actually grown to 15 because when a price is 20 and she was willing to pay 35 there's 15 additional dollars that she gets essentially gets to save that she would have spent if she had to. So as prices drop, we begin to see an increase in consumer surplus, all things else being held constant. In a world where there's linear demand, when we have thousands of people in the market instead of that stair step where we only had five or six, then we find it's really easy to measure consumer surplus. Instead of going and adding up each individual consumer surplus and coming to a total, we can just do an area of, of a triangle. If we say one half base times height, then we can figure out the area uh, of consumer surplus, and that would be the total consumer surplus for the market. So the consumer surplus would be measured as the area below the demand curve, but above the price line. And when you have a linear demand curve, that creates a triangle. And we know that the area of a triangle is calculated as one half base times height. And so that will give us the uh, total consumer surplus for the market at a given price. A related concept is what we call producer surplus, and that is very similar to consumer surplus. It's comparing the maximum price a supplier is willing to sell his good at, um, which is measured as his cost. So the price has to be at least this much in order for me uh, to want to sell. So in this case, uh, for used textbooks, um, Andrew would be willing to sell his textbook as long as he gets a $5 price, whereas Engelbert will only supply his textbook if the price is $45. And so um, we begin to see this kind of stair-step upward sloping supply curve. And so if the price were $30, we'd see that there are three people who are willing to sell their books, Andrew, Betty, and Carlos. All three of them had a cost of less than $30. So um, as long as 
he got, I got five dollars as long as Betty got fifteen as long as Carlos got twenty five for his book they're willing to sell thirty is at least that amount and so they're willing to sell their their books whereas Donna needs at least thirty five in order to sell so in this situation with a price of thirty dollars only three people are willing to offer books in the case of Andrew there's producer surplus Andrew was willing to sell at five dollars for his book but he gets thirty so essentially there's a twenty five dollar producer surplus Betty has a $15 producer surplus. She was willing to take, sell her book for $15, but she gets to sell it for $30, so there's an additional $15 um, that she gets to enjoy. And then Carlos has a $5 producer surplus. If you want to look at it in a table, it's the same thing, where we take the um, producer surplus is equal to the price minus the cost for the supplier. So in the case of... Um, this graph, we see Alicia was a $5 cost, gets $30 price for the book, $25, and so forth down. We see that Darren will not sell his book because his cost is $35, he's only getting $30, it's therefore not worth it to him to sell, and so he will not. So in this market, total producer surplus is equal to uh, $45. $25 for Alicia, $15 for Brad, and $5 for Claudia. And we can, again, in a linear world where there's lots and lots and lots of uh, suppliers in a market, we can calculate the value of producer surplus as the area of the triangle, which is above the supply curve but below uh, the price. And that area is one-half base times height, and that will tell us essentially the additional benefit that sellers got um, by selling at a price higher than what they were willing to sell at. When we put it all together, we come up with this idea of total surplus, that there's benefits for the consumers, there's benefits for the producers, um, and so we can just add consumer and producer surplus together to get uh, the total surplus for the market. Um, and we find that surplus is maximized when we're at equilibrium, when the market is being efficient, when there's no other way to make a trade that makes someone better off without making somebody else worse off, then we have maximized our total surplus. Now one of the um, one of the easiest ways to kind of see consumer um, and producer surplus and one of the classic examples from my previous experience in, in taking econ in college is looking at value meals at a fast food restaurant. Um, from a consumer surplus standpoint you know you were willing to buy the drink the french fries and the and the sandwich separately and you probably would have been willing to pay six dollars for the meal but because they're packaged them together and offer you it for five you're you're happy to pay it and so you have a one dollar consumer surplus in that example because you would have paid six but they're offered five and that makes you happy so you buy it now people like you will continue to buy meals until we get to that last person who was willing to pay five for that combination and because it's a five dollar price they'll pay it when we get to the consumer on the demand curve that was only willing to pay four dollars and ninety nine cents then they stop and so that would be consumer surplus and uh, the producers you know to sell that they really only need to get uh, say a price of two dollars so the fact that they can sell it to you uh, for five means that they're they're getting three dollars more than what they actually needed to cover their costs and so they're happy to make that trade and in fact they will continue to make trades until uh, their costs are equal to uh, the price at which they can sell the meal and so the producer gets some extra happiness too so then that also partly explains why producers are trying to maximize their producer price um, and why they offer things like uh, value sizing your meals so what they the producer knows is that you get a certain amount of happiness you would have been willing to pay 50 cents to get a larger size soda but they'll only charge you 39 so what they're doing is um, enabling you to have some consumer surplus but they're kind of eating away at it in the sense that you're spending a little bit more money than you would have if they had not offered you the deal so there's there's a lot of kind of business behind it too but the, the long and short of it is that businesses offer you these kinds of um, discounts in order to get you to purchase something because for you you feel like you're, you're getting an extra benefit because of your consumer surplus. There are lots of other examples we can talk about in class, but that's kind of the basics of it. We'll do some more practice and uh, look at some other examples when you come to class, and I will see you then.